Welcome to Universal Group of Institutions, Bengaluru. In the corridors of global diplomacy, one pursuit has remained constant for decades. India's quest for a permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council, UNSC. But this isn't just about prestige. It's about rewriting the rules of global governance in a world that has evolved dramatically since the UNSC's formation after World War II. And leading this charge in recent years are Prime Minister Narendra Modi and External Affairs, Minister S. Jai Shankar, two men determined to see India take its place among the world's decision makers. The Great Aspiration, India's case for UNSC membership. Why does India deserve a seat at the UNSC? The answer lies in numbers and influence. India, with over 1.4 billion people, isn't just the world's largest democracy. It's a giant, representing a huge slice of humanity. The current structure of the United Nations Security Council, a relic of the post-war world, doesn't reflect the geopolitical realities of today. It excludes major players from the global south like India, whose voice is crucial in debates over global peace, security, and development. India's economic clout is another powerful argument. As the fifth largest economy, India is a key player in global trade and climate change negotiations. The nation is no longer a quiet participant. It has become an architect of the future, shaping the policies that will determine the course of the planet. But India's case goes beyond just numbers. It is one of the largest contributors to UN peacekeeping missions, having sent over 200,000 troops across the globe to help maintain peace. For decades, India has been in the trenches, supporting UN-led multilateralism and taking a stand for a rules-based international order. And as a nuclear power, India's role in stabilizing South Asia and contributing to global nuclear diplomacy is undeniable. The diplomatic chessboard, Modi and Jai Shankar's push for reform. While India's case is strong, getting to the UNSC's inner circle isn't just about merit, it's about diplomatic maneuvering. And this is where Modi and Jai Shankar's relentless efforts come into play. Modi has transformed India's foreign policy, advocating for UNSC reforms at the highest global forums. Whether at G7, BRICS, or the UN General Assembly, Modi has made it clear. Global future ki baat kar rahe hai, to human centric approach sarva pratham honi chahi. Success of humanity lies in our collective strength, not in the battlefield. Our Vaishwik Shanti, even Vikas Kiliye, global Sansthaume, reforms Avashak hai. Reform is the key to relevance. Major Dekar Kahunga, ki global action must match global ambition. The world must change and the UNSC must reflect today's power structures, not those of 1945. Behind the scenes, Jai Shankar has been working tirelessly, engaging world leaders and forging alliances that could tip the scales in India's favor. Expansion and proper representation in the permanent category is a particular imperative. Asia, Africa, and Latin America the Global South cannot continue to be shortchanged. They must be given their legitimate voice. Real change needs to happen and happen fast. The two leaders have skillfully navigated India's relationships with the P5, the five permanent members of the UNSC, the US, Russia, the UK, France, and China. And so far, the results are promising. The US, Russia, the UK, and France will all support India's bid, recognizing the country's growing importance in the global order. Missed opportunities, Nehru's gambit. However, history has a way of casting long shadows. 70 years ago, India was offered the very seat it now seeks, but turned it down, not once, but twice. In 1950, 
John Foster Dulles, an advisor to US President Truman, made a bold offer. Replace China with India as a permanent UNSC member. The offer was relayed to Jawaharlal Nehru through India's ambassador, Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. But Nehru rejected it, unwilling to take a position that could antagonize China. Then, in 1955, another opportunity knocked, this time from the Soviet Union. Premier Nikolai Bulganin suggested adding India as a sixth permanent member without removing China. But again, Nehru declined, arguing that India shouldn't push itself forward before China's membership was fully resolved. Critics now look back at these decisions as lost opportunities, calling them Himalayan blunders that delayed India's rise on the global stage. The present struggle, momentum amidst challenges. Today, Modi and Jai Shankar are fighting to overcome the legacy of those missed opportunities. The world has changed, and so has India. With its expanding diplomatic influence, India is no longer on the sidelines. Its campaign for UNSC reform has gained momentum, and the support of the US, Russia, the UK, and France adds weight to its bid. As I reiterate here, is in favor of the Security Council being expanded. Germany, Japan, India, Brazil should be permanent members. We want to see permanent African representation on the Council. Brazil, India, Japan and Germany as permanent members. And more seats for elected members as well. But one giant hurdle remains. China. The very nation Nehru sought to appease by rejecting the UNSC offer has now become India's greatest obstacle. As a permanent UNSC member, China holds veto power, and it has consistently blocked India's ambitions, driven by geopolitical rivalry and its alliance with Pakistan. The future, India's unfinished business. So here we are, at a pivotal moment in history. India's bid for a permanent UNSC seat is more than a diplomatic campaign. It's a story of redemption, a quest, to right the wrongs of the past. Modi and Jai Shankar have set the stage for India to take its place as a global power. But will the world and China allow it? The answer to that question will determine not only India's future, but the future of global governance itself. One thing is certain, India will not stop until it secures its rightful seat at the UNSC table. After all, in the shifting sands of global power, no seat is truly permanent unless it reflects the will of the people. And India has over a billion voices ready to be heard. That's all for now. Stay tuned with us. For more videos, subscribe our channel. Thank you.